Welcome to Burning Bright, a weekly podcast presenting poetry and prose from Passager. Dr. Cheryl Kirschenbaum wrote a book titled The Science of Kissing. In it, she said the earliest literary evidence for kissing comes from India about 3,500 years ago. She also said this, A passionate kiss can make our pupils dilate, probably one reason so many of us close our eyes. Two-thirds of us tilt our heads to the right when we kiss, and it's not correlated with right-handedness. And according to at least some research, people remember more of the details about their first kiss than about their first sexual experience. I mention all this because July 6th was International Kissing Day. Even though the day has passed, it's never too late to send a card, or to kiss someone for that matter. I'd hope to build this episode of Burning Bright around kissing, but Passager seems to have a dearth of pieces about kissing. All I could come up with was my own. I looked for pieces about kissing, but it seemed that they were missing. Can you believe I have trouble getting my poetry published? But I did find some great pieces about closeness and romance. Here are a few. Susan Cohen said she and her husband visited a mortgage broker who used the term spousely held. She said, neither of us had heard the term before, but what poet in a long marriage could resist its inspiration? Here's Susan's poem, Spousely Held, from Passager, Issue 51. It begins with the epigraph, I'll put down that it's spousely held, mortgage broker. Even though I no longer want to be a rousely held love, I'll want to be spousely held. When I don't need to be wowsly held, I'll still need to be spousely held, clutched to your chest like a bottle that can't be pried from your grip. Hold me for years yet until I'm so short of breath that breath stops short, and I die housely held in your arms. Then burn me, bag me, box me, shelf me, Say a few kind words. I'll wait patient, as only ash can be patient. My objections to death, mousely held. I want our ashes to float in the ocean wrapping, a cloud in the water suspended in waves. Let's be unsettled as salt and drift off a pier where we sat when we were just vowsly held. Susan Cohen's poem, Spousely Held. Catherine McGeehan wrote this next poem for her mother on the death of her father, Leaning. They leaned into each other for so long that the weight of his hand on her arm seemed part of her own, and his fingers bent into a shape that was hers, so that when he died, her hands curled inward, and the words of songs could only be half remembered. Leaning, Catherine McGeehan, from Passager, Issue 58. Next, Two Old Lovers by Penelope Scambly Scott. If you come through the cottage garden, I will be frilled pinks on either side of your path. When you open the picket gate, don't worry, I will be the white trellis dripping with beech roses. If you walk along the pebbled beach, I will be the narrow edging of white foam. If you lay your hand on retreating water, I will be these tiny fish streaking between fingers. After I measure the pulse of your wrist, I will turn into a sand crab tickling your palm. When I am a sand crab, oh, my dearest, you will cup me like water. I will curl and rush out to sea. I will, but I promise to trail the moon back to you. Please know I am inventing this whole story the garden, the gate, even the ocean. If and then are how I pretend. Are you listening? We needn't pretend our hair has gone white, like broken foam on the sea. Two Old Lovers by Penelope Scambly Scott from Passager, Issue 50. She said that if it sounds familiar, it's because she wrote it as the grown-up version of the children's classic picture book, Runaway Bunny. And finally, on this episode inspired by International Kissing Day, Necking by Victoria Korth. She said she was exploring the various meanings and implications of the word necking, 
She said she wanted to layer these meanings, respecting a narrative outline in a painterly fashion, seeking to create a visual effect through sound. She barely knew him, yet they were falling towards earth as if falling were the same as landing on grass behind the firehouse at dusk, his hand stretching the neck of her blue sweater while he rubbed his cheek against her, his neck pliable as a swan, upper body heavier as they leaned back, his dark red sweatshirt nearly invisible, empty bleachers an outline, wet honeysuckle familiar, sweet. He could have tightened fingers, rough, from summer work, squeezed as she did the neck of her violin. He could have lifted her into his van. A mute swan grunted softly while he wrestled his need to touch, and she clung on as if to earth's crust. From Passenger, Issue 54, Necking, Victoria Korth. To subscribe to or learn more about Passenger and its commitment to writers over 50, go to PassagerBooks.com. Passenger offers a 25% discount on the books and journal issues featured here on Burning Bright. Visit our website to see what's on sale this week. You can download Burning Bright from Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, and various other podcast apps. For Kendra, Mary, Christine, Roseanne, and the rest of the Passenger staff, I'm John Shore. (laughs) 